So if the inside edge of your tires are wearing out, that means your camber might be a little bit negative or a tow out issue. In this quick video, I'll show you how to change your camber, bring it back to more positive. It won't be actually positive, it'll be just less negative. And I'll show you how to realign the tow. By maximizing your tire life, you're gonna save money, reduce the number of tires that you have to throw away in the lifetime of your vehicle. And overall, that's good for the environment, good for your wallet, and I think everyone wants that. In this video, I'll quickly show you how to do an alignment on E46. I'll do the camber of the front and back, and I'll show you how to do the alignment for the front and back. And for the E46, the camber is set such that it's going to wear out your tire, as shown here. If you're having crazy tire wear on the inside, it's because you're, you've got crazy negative camber, and I'm just going to set it as positive as it can be. And then the E46, even if you set it as positive as it can be set, you've still got 0.5 degrees of negative camber, so that's fine. It'll reduce your tire wear to the point where it's acceptable, and I think that's probably the best you can do. So when you're measuring camber, all you got to do is put a square on the floor, put it up against the tire, measure how much distance is between the top, make the bottom touch so it's zero, and then measure how high your readings are, then just go a tangent of the top run over the height, and then you will get 1.223 degrees. So in my case, I had 1.057 centimeters at the top. I measured 49.5 centimeters up, so I just went a tan 1.057 over 49.5. That gives you your degrees, and I had 1.223 degrees of negative camber, so that's quite a bit, and that's why the inside of the tire will wear out much quicker than the outside. So I pushed it as far as I could over, and I still have 0.336 degrees of negative camber, which is just a little bit, but it's good enough to reduce the wear. It'll definitely be much less than 1.23 would have done. So for all four tires, you can get a square, Make sure that your surface is level so there's no gaps underneath. You can clamp it to a 2x4 to just hold it in place. And then if you have this point to this point, you have that distance. And you have the difference here. You can measure that difference using a caliper. Once you have that distance, you can plug it into your calculator, arc 10 of the small distance divided by the vertical distance. That'll give you 1.08 degrees. So. So that's how you calculate the camber of each tire. The camber on the front is fixed from the factory, but all you gotta do is punch out a pin and then you can adjust it from the tower strut at the top. You just have to take out three 13 millimeter nuts and then the tower moves back and forth. I'll show you that quickly, how to hammer it out. The rest of the way, it'll just sit underneath after you get it out. Don't loosen the bolts first, otherwise it'll screw something up. Oh, there you go, hammered it right out. Once you loosen those nuts, you can move it back and forth with a screwdriver or something. So we're going to jack it up to take the pressure off, loosen the three bolts, and then make sure you chalk your front tires so they don't roll back. And make sure you use jack stands when you get it underneath. These are only tightened to 17 foot-pounds, so don't go crazy on it. Once you loosen it, you can use a flathead screwdriver to move it around. So once you move it, you can lock it into place. Now it's pushed all the way over, and go ahead and tighten it all up. So once you lower it, the only way to get it to settle is to drive backwards and then forwards again. Now we've set both front tires to about 5 millimeters at the top, so that's as close to zero camber as it can get. That'll reduce the wear on your tires. The rear camber can be adjusted quite easily. You just have to loosen the bolt and then there's an adjustment bolt that's closer to the front of the vehicle. You just move that one to the most uh, positive camber you can and you should still have 0 0.5 degrees of negative camber. And if you're getting a little bit positive camber then it might be because something's bent. But it shouldn't be positive. It should always be a little bit negative. So to change the camber we're going to raise the vehicle, measure where the tire sits at, and then change it by the amount that you need to change it by to get the degrees you want.
So this 18 millimeter bolt on the back side, this is the front of the car, that's used for adjustment. So keep the wrench on there and don't let it move. There's an eccentric washer, make sure you mark that so you know what the stock setting was and you can adjust it off from there. So when you loosen the front, it's going to try to make this wrench turn. You can just put the wrench there to make sure it doesn't turn. So now with this wrench, you can go ahead and adjust it. So now I've got it to 3.94 millimeters at the top. I'm going to lock it and then I'm going to lower it and test to see what it needs at. Once you've got it almost tight, it's not going to move so you can go ahead and torque it to spec. I torque it to 40 foot pounds and then we'll go check it when we lower it. So once you back it up and go forwards again, as you can see, you've got about five millimeters of clearance on the top. And basically every tire was one point something degrees of negative camber, which is pretty bad. So I've got all the settings down to point something, which is a lot more acceptable. And I think it'll reduce the tire wear on my front and back tires pretty well. When you take your rear alignment, you want to measure it with lasers two dots in the front, two dots in the back. You create a trapezoid with it. The top of your trapezoid will be smaller because it's toe in. The bottom will be longer. If it's toe out, the top will be longer. The bottom will be shorter. You just run your triangle, calculate your angle, go A10, and you've got your angle. Mine is 0 0.0654, times that by two because you got two wheels, and it's 0.131. And the BMW spec says it should be 0.167 to 0.367. But I want to maintain the tread on my tires and make sure they last as long as they can, so I've set mine to 0.131 degrees total. My front alignment is at 0 0.0651 total, toe in. And that to me is pretty good because it maintains tread life. The BMW spec is 0.1 to 0.367, toe in. So if you're not worried about your tread, then go ahead and set a little bit of toe-in. But if you want it to turn more quickly and responsively, make it toe out. The front alignment is easy on any vehicle. You just have to undo the 24 millimeter locking nut. You hold the tie rod end and then you rotate the engine side of the tie rod and it'll adjust it. And make sure you adjust the left and right sides equal turns. Otherwise your steering wheel is going to change and your center is going to be lost. The front had a toe-in of about 1 degree, so I've adjusted it and now we're at 0 0.03 degrees of toe-in. Toe-in helps with rear wheel drive cars to increase stability, but I want it to be as straight as possible, so I've set it to 0 0.03, so it's pretty much parallel. And that's what you want both of your tires to be parallel if you want to increase the life of them. So take your laser level. Put it up against the rim, make sure it's nice and level. Uh, fire it back to some object, mark it, fire it to the front, some object, mark it, and then measure the distance between the two dots there. The distance between the two dots there. You should actually aim down a little bit so you can measure it easier. So you aim about there. If you don't have a back wall, you can do it on the back wall as well, but if you don't want to do it on the back wall, just shoot it into an object. Measure the distance between the front dots, the back dots, the distance between the two dots, front and back. Then you can calculate the angle that the tires are at. So this is towed in 0 0.03225 degrees, which is not, not that bad. It should be towed out a bit, but that's fine as well. It's not gonna change much. The rear alignment is probably the hardest thing to do but luckily most of the time you don't need to adjust the rear alignment unless you hit the curb or something. So there's just three bolts, you undo those bolts, but you need a special tool to adjust it finely, but you can just hammer it back and forth. Just leave the bolts a little tight and then you can hammer it. Inscribe in there what your factory position is so you can use it as a reference, and then just loosen the bolts a bit, hammer it. If it doesn't move, loosen the three bolts a little more, hammer it, and it should move a little bit and then you can lock it in place. You've always got to drive it forward and backwards every time you do the test because 
you're going to be sitting down on pavement you're not going to have any slip plates or rotating plates so you have to drive the vehicle forward and backwards and that will get your tires sitting true and then take the measurement and you'll notice that every time you move drive it that measurement will change if you had just set the car back down so make sure you drive it forward and backwards don't get lazy if you want to increase the front camber adjustments and the rear camber adjustments you can buy camber plates for the front and buy camber rods for the back here are a bunch of different camber plates that you can find online they're pretty cheap only a hundred bucks or so and there's a bunch of camber rods that you can find online it just increases the adjustability of the front and back camber I haven't tried any of these I don't have any need for it but if you want some crazy negative camber or for some reason you want positive camber then go ahead and buy these but I really don't see a need for it because you want at least 0.5 degrees of negative camber so you don't really need these unless something's bent and if something's bent you should replace that instead of band-aid it with this fix but I just wanted to let you know that these options are out there for you if you need to add more adjustments to your vehicle. So there you go, that's how you make all the adjustments on the E46. I hope that helps. It shows you how to get your tires nice and straight, nice and aligned so that you don't get crazy tire wear. And you'll increase the lifetime of your tires, you'll probably increase gas mileage, and best of all, you're going to increase the handling of your vehicle. It's not going to track left and right like it always does and it'll just drive straight and true. So I hope that helps and thanks for watching. And my friend Kelso, oh, he's a nice person too. <laughs> Stay here, oh good. Uh, you know, um, so I would love car sex or just sex or just a car. Jolene, I think Jolene buzzed in. Is it Ted from the 70s show?